Time for some garden and greenhouse chores. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new, my name is Rose. My pronouns are she, her. And today we're gonna to be working in the greenhouse and the garden. And this video is kindly sponsored by Gardena. One of the main things that we have to do in our garden is mow the lawn. And luckily my boyfriend does most of that. Since the weather is really warm right now, I'm actually in my bikini. The grass is growing really fast and so are the plants. So we have to regularly keep up with the grass and also everything else. And this small mower by Gardena working on a battery is is really handy for a tiny patch of grass that you can't really even call a lawn. Don't tell my boyfriend. One patch that's even smaller than our lawn is this little patch of walking chamomile, which I wanted as a lawn instead of grass because it takes less effort, it takes less water, and it smells delicious. But what it needs is that you step on it to flatten it to make sure that the plants are rooting back into the soil. To clarify, it is a specific type of chamomile that grows in little rosettes. And when you flatten them, the branches touch the ground again and they re-root into it and then grow new little plants. So that's how it spreads out and becomes a nice full patch. And it smells so good. Anytime anyone comes to visit our garden, they always come over to the walking chamomile and walk on it and then smell it if they know about it, of course. And if they don't, I will tell them about it. So I highly recommend this for your lawn if you don't have it planted just yet. Consider it instead of grass. And the handy thing is we can use the battery out of the mower also into our rain pop barrel pump. Rain barrel pump. I always say that word wrong. Only I just realized we don't have any rainwater left. We totally ran out. It has not rained in my country for weeks, maybe months for a country known for its rain. It's been very dry and warm. So we're gonna get it out of the other system. I'm already sweating. <laughs> One of the things I've noticed in the greenhouse, apart from that it's beautiful and light and we love it here, is that I forget to water the plants. So recently I've made Friday my watering day and also come out here hopefully when I remember to water. Generally my boyfriend is pre pretty good about watering the plants that are his. He's like the owner of the bananas here and some of the strelitzia and elocasia, the ones that he likes with huge leaves. The other ones are more my responsibility and I'm trying to keep up with them more. But especially since I started growing sunflower seeds, they really show me when they are thirsty and they get thirsty quite quickly because they are in very small pots. Maybe we should repot them into bigger pots and like separate them a little bit because they are all together, like plunked together, probably too much for their own happiness. So chores in the greenhouse, cleaning the greenhouse probably because there's actually a lot of poop on the glass as well. I'm noticing now, thank you seagulls. And well, the grass is already done. <sighs> sweaty, sweaty. <sighs> Maybe not too much because it's hot today. <sighs> There's quite a few pots here of basically dead plants or finished plants. Ooh, lecker. I don't want to remove because that's not going to do anything. These ones are all empty. I don't know if you can see all the boxes over here but there's some boxes for an event that I'm hosting soon. Whoops, on the 24th of June, which is coming up quite soon. They are part of the goodie bag. So they've been here for months, but finally it's gonna be cleared out in a few weeks and then we'll have more space to put all the plants. First, we're just gonna water. Oh, thirsty. <sighs> Jesus, it's hot. Okay, I'm really not used to the heat anymore. I can <sighs> hardly stay out here. Anyway, I wanted to show you this. This is my little lithops that I've been ignoring for a while because they were not doing well for me at all. I didn't enjoy growing them anymore and I knew they needed a lot of light. So I popped them out here in the greenhouse and now they are all making new baby leaves. It is so cute. I'm very tempted to water it because it is super dry, but apparently you're not supposed to water them when they are making new leaves. My face feels like it's literally dripping. Uh, anyone else who cannot handle the heat very well? Okay, okay, let's continue. Some of the cute plants that I'm growing here, this is a little sedum propagation, a little glass of string of pearls propagations. These, the stems dried out at the base of the mother plant 
and so I popped them in here to hopefully root them back. Yeah, I see some little roots, I think. Hard to show you, but I hope these are gonna come back and I can make the pot a little bit more full. Oh, sweat dripping into my face. This is a bougainville. Oh, I don't have to use my hand. This is bougainville. I don't know if you know this plant, but if you're ever in the Mediterranean, you probably know it. You've also seen it on my Instagram. They become beautiful plants, but they are so thirsty. I'm really struggling to keep up. So there's now a, like a little bit of water at the bottom of the pot to keep this happy. Why am I doing this on the heat of the day? Okay, keep going. Ah, oh, wait, do I have a hoi quartz allergies? Because my eyes are itchy now and I need a new battery for my camera. Okay, I got a new battery and I've decided to do a little cooling down break. Zet de broeierzone 1 aan voor 2 minuten. Yes! <laughs> Five minutes later. <laughs> okay. I think I'm ready to continue. Because I have some cool plants in here that I want to show you. Like this one. It doesn't look like much, but it is a gloriosum propagation that I'm growing out for my mom, hopefully. And you can see a little point already starting to grow on it. So I'm excited for that. Oh, and there's another point in the back there. Do you see this? And then here one as well. And then my little Hoya fungi that survived winter out in the greenhouse and finally started to grow again there in the corner. Oh, although that died off. <laughs> On this shelf, we have some of my cacti and succulents. Agave, aloe, opuntia, that I think is about to flower. It's making little weird points at the top there. It's kind of hard to see because it's so bright here. Oh, it's actually open, wait. I have a lot of respect for this plant because the hairs are so painful and annoying, but it apparently has a lot of flower buds. There's a lot of them. And then this one, it's already open. I don't think I've ever seen this in flower before, like actually open in the right time because they don't open for very long. This is very nice. Also, I see a lot of mealybugs. There's a bunch of mealybugs on the flowers, but luckily we have the good bugs from Entocare, so they're going to go on here. Oh, I just found another cactus flower. Wait. Okay. Let me just go one by one. This is my sedum that you can see it gets way too much light in here generally. But it is growing again from the top, all the new growths. Really happy with that because I thought it might be dead. So going well. And then here, whoa! I'm so lucky we're doing this right now because otherwise I would have totally missed it. This is my decrepit bowl of succulents. <laughs> Sorry guys. Yeah, they're not looking great. But what do we have here? Look at this flower. Look at it! It is one of those cactus. What are they called again? You know better than me, probably. Ah, uh, something with an A. Yeah, I don't know, but it has a flower and I'm very excited. Ha! While I have this, I might as well water it and cut off some of these flower spikes because I think they are done. Drown that hoe, as Crystal would say. Ew! I found a mealybug nest. We have a lot of those here, unfortunately. Kill it. Kill it. These are the good bugs that I get against mealybugs. They are called, oh, I <laughs> had it upside down, sorry. Cryptos larva from Entocare, company that I work with. And they are very cute. Let's see if they are awake. Look at how cute that is. Ooh, oh no, it dropped. Oh, they are so clumsy. Where are you, buddy? I better pop these in where they go because they are clumsy as balls. I'm also gonna pop a few on the opuntia. I also had this beaver tail epiphyllum flower this year, which I was very excited about. It looks like it is now making a fruit. I don't know if they make fruits, but I think so. Like a dragon fruit type thing. I'm just going to cut the old flower off. Let's also water on this other side. Here we have a few bigger plants. We have a nice setup of hanging jungle cacti, I guess, ripsalis and lepismium and stuff. And my boyfriend's palm tree. Our living wall that is not doing so, so well, but we're working on it. There's a few plants living here now that 
I wanted to show you, I just watered them, so they're leaking. These were some ones that I struggled with inside or that had pests and I decided they had to live out here and see if they survived. And this is actually doing quite well. This is a Philodendron brontianum making a new leaf over here. If you don't know, in our greenhouse in winter, tropical plants like this cannot survive because it gets down to freezing. Basically, we keep it just above freezing. Otherwise, it's way too expensive. So in winter, it's always a surprise of the succulents do well, the cacti do great. The rest is like, fingers crossed, we'll see. The other one that I have in here is as Soderoy that I had as a cutting that was, I think, infested with thrips. And I just have it in a little pot now with... Oh, I took this out! That's it! I took this out of a terrarium that was way too small for it. And it's covered in mealybugs. So it was getting too tall for that and getting a little bit bent over. It seems it'll be doing okay. It's making a new leaf over here. Can you see? Very nice. So I'm just trying it out for this summer. It's the first summer that I'm actually trying to grow some philodendron in here because it's usually way too bright. Over on this corner is the darkest part of the greenhouse. And then this I also took out of that terrarium thingy. You can see how sad it was living all crumpled up at the top of the little terrarium box. I unfortunately forgot to film what it looked like before I took everything out. But this is a philodendron glorious that is also growing a new leaf and having some mealybug issues. And my string of pearls, the mama I was talking about, it lost a lot of the longer ones because it gets too dry. <gasps> okay, don't hold them angled when <laughs> you've just watered. But I think it's because the soil is so dry. I might have to repot this or do something with it. I don't know yet, but for now, they still look okay. They're still plump, if you know what I mean. Oh, and one more that I popped in here. This is my Calathea orbifolia that was growing in my huge terrarium, but it was getting way too big and being overtaken by the rest of the plants. So I took it out and we'll see. I don't think it will necessarily like it in here because it gets very, very hot. And you can see all the older leaves also crisping up because the humidity, of course, is very different than my big terrarium, which is like 99% humidity. Here it's maybe 60, but at least it is in a pot. It's not thrown away. We'll see how it goes. Look who we have here. Mickey came to say hello. For cleaning the glass doors and all the other parts of glass, I need our high pressure machine that also works on these same batteries, power for all it's called. But my boyfriend hid it somewhere because we don't use it very often. It's somewhere in the back of the shed and we have a very, very small shed that he has packed a ton of stuff into. So I can't reach it and I don't want to like unfold this whole system and then have to put it back and not know where everything goes. So unfortunately, I'm not able to clean the glass just yet, but I might do that this weekend. Luckily, I do have my own spray machine. This works on a rechargeable battery on its own that's in the head, not the same power battery that we normally use, but at least I can spray... Oops. At least I can spray some of the plants so they have a little bit of extra humidity in here for these hot days. It's clear that the main lesson of this video is to spray yourself before you work in a greenhouse where it's very, very hot. <laughs> It's a few days later. We are preparing the garden for a barbecue with my boyfriend's family tonight. We don't have much shade in the garden. So in summer, we like to hang up a bunch of shade cloths. They make such a big difference in keeping the garden a little bit more cool and survivable. I actually enjoy it in there now. A while ago, Gardena sent me their click up system. I just installed this little bird bath and a little insect hotel that immediately this morning we saw a big bumblebee on top of and it looks really cute as well and i'm gonna go buy some oil to go into these lamp thingies so hopefully by the time we have a barbecue here we have a few nice flames going on we also have a set of rings to work out on and every time i walk by there i try to practice a little bit With my boyfriend being home now, it means we've also found the high pressure water cleaner thingy so I can clean the greenhouse before the family gets here.
It looks so much better. I'm really happy I included this part because I kind of wanted to skip it. Time for me to cool down in our cold tub. Thank you so much for being here, for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give a thumbs up to the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And a big thank you to Gardena, of course, for sponsoring this video and for working with us for several years now, making our garden so much more easy and fun to work in. Their products are high quality and awesome. I love them. Okay, that's it for this video. Bye, friends. <laughs> Zet de hot tub filter aan. Ah! <laughs> I don't know the word in English. Fuck all in Dutch.